Today we're going to look at my most anticipated board games coming out at Eschen Spiel this year. Thank you for joining me today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. This year's definitely different with not a lot of conventions going on, but I still want to give my most anticipated board games that are coming out this fall at the Eschen Spiel. This video is going to be a little different. Um, I have played a few of these games, so what I thought I'd do is divide each number into uh, two categories, basically games that I've played and games that I haven't played so we'll get two games for each number. For number 10, we have Pandasaurus Games Ohanami. This is a game I have played. This is a small box game, but it packs a big punch. It plays quick. It says it plays in about 20 minutes. It's for two to four players. There's card drafting going on. There's simultaneous play. I like that. I just like a lot that's going on, on in the game. Uh, in the game, players are getting cards in their hand, there's three rounds, and they're playing cards, basically collecting different sets, and it has a little bit of the game, if you're familiar with that, with the some of the mechanics, but I really like this game a lot better, so check out Ohanami from Pandasaurus Games. Monasterium is the game that I'm interested in that I haven't played yet. This is from DLP Games. It says, train novices, build stained glass windows, and fulfill monasteries' special missions. This is a game for two to four players, takes about 90 to 120 minutes to play. The thing that sort of intrigued me is not only the theme, I, I like this monastery theme, but also it says it has an innovative dice mechanism and that presents the players with ever new challenges. So I'm intrigued by that. So I'm looking forward to trying out Monasterium in the future. For number nine, Calico is the game that I've played and highly recommend this. This is from Flat Out Games and also distributed by AEG, Alderac Entertainment Group. This game is a tile laying game that is very simple to explain the rules, but very hard to master. Basically on your turn, you are playing one of two tiles that are in, in your hand and playing that into your own personal board. But where you're placing your tiles, your little quilt pieces on your board makes a big difference for how you're going to score. Are you gonna get the color, the buttons with color matching? Are you going to get the points from the different sets that you're trying to collect around the different places in the uh, on the board? I really enjoyed my plays of Calico. We actually did a playthrough of this on our 24 hour gaming marathon that you can check out on our channel. And um, yeah, Calico, really, really cool. Crossed Words from Indie Boards and Cards is the game that I've chosen that I'm really interested in, but I haven't played yet. This is for three to six players, takes about 30 minutes to play. Melissa and I really love word games, word-based games, and this says it is a brain-bending party game, where at the beginning of the game, there is a uh, col there's columns where there's a three column categories and three row categories forming a three by three grid, and you're trying to like make connections, so it might have this little bit of a code names feel to it, so I'm really interested in what crossed words brings to the table in my number nine spot. For number eight, the game that I've played is Super Skill Pinball 4K. And this is from WizKids. Melissa and I have really enjoyed our plays of this. Melissa probably even more than I have. She is a pinball wizard. This game is a really cool roll and write game where you are basically placing your balls on the top of this ta pinball table and trying to get the right, get the, hit the balls in the right places and uh, flip them back up, flip those balls back up and make them bounce all around the table. Uh, some of the cool things about this game are that there's four different tables packed into this box. It does play, uh, I believe two to four players, actually one to four players. So you can play solo if you wanna do that. And each game takes about 30 minutes. There's easier tables, there's harder tables. 
Uh, just love what this game is bringing to the table. And I think my favorite table is the wizard table, the dragon slayer table. And uh, becoming a powerful wizard, I like what's, what's happening in that game. Um, each table adds a little bit different nuance, the different game mechanics to the uh, pinball uh, game. So check out Super Skill Pinball 4K from WizKids. 2491 Planet Ship from Mebo Games is the game that I haven't played that I'm interested in. This is for two to five players, takes about 45 to 90 minutes to play. This game has a cool theme, the sci-fi theme, and it says that it is based on a previous game from this company, City of Spies, Estoril 1942. But in this game, you are captaining a planet ship and players are sending out their finest team of characters to land on various locations of the mothership Alpha in order to rescue its most valuable crew. Really interested, interested in this, not only because of the theme, but the mechanics are, look pretty interesting too. Interesting too. There's hand management, modular board, some secret unit deployment, and there's like a deck bag uh, building going on as well. For number seven, we have Athenaeum, which is the game I have played. This is Athenaeum Mystic Library from Renegade Game Studios. This game is cool because not only the theme is cool, library books, I love reading books and things like that, but also the gameplay itself is really fun. There's card drafting going on, there's sort of tile laying, you're taking books and putting them in your own bookshelves, trying to arrange them properly to meet different objectives and things like that and uh, plays pretty quickly. There's basically two main rounds where you're drafting cards one way and then drafting cards another way. And yeah, really cool. Love Athenaeum. Katara from Yellow is for two to four players. It takes about 40 minutes to play. This game really intrigues me. Uh, it has a game mechanic that I've had hit or misses on, area majority, area movement going on, area influence. There's some hand management going on, uh, but the game really sounds interesting. The theme really uh, just really sucked me in. It says, strengthen your army of hunters, cheetah centaurs, and heroes. You're basically managing your cards to plan your actions, which I find interesting. And then the more territories you control, the more options you get. So interested in what Katara is gonna play like. For number six, the game that I played is Seastead from WizKids. This is a two player game. I'm actually currently working on my review video for this game and that'll be out soon. Um, so you can hear some of my more in-depth thoughts, but overview wise, love this game already. So I guess you're getting a little spoiler uh, on this as well. But uh, the game, it has basically on your turn two phase or you can choose whether to dive or build. And when you dive, it's got this cool I cut you choose going on where uh, you're pulling a resource card and one side has, both sides have different types of resources and you get to decide what side you want. So you're sort of like, what am I going to be giving my opponent? So I like that. It's got really cool uh, buildings that are going on in the game and what you build really matters for what you're going to get. And yeah, the component quality of this is really cool as well. So Seastead from WizKids. For the game that I haven't played is actually an expansion to the game that I have played, which is Treasure Island, which I love the artwork. This is from Madigo. This expansion is called Captain Silver Revenge Island. And this game not only brings a new module to the game, but also contains new immersive components and two new maps, Revenge Island and an original reinterpretation of the existing map. For number five, the game that I've played that I've really been enjoying is Cloud City from Blue Orange. This is a tile laying city building type game uh, with three dimensional pieces. They are really cool looking pieces and as you're playing these tiles, you're putting these buildings onto them and then trying to connect these walkways and it's got some spatial things going on. Really enjoy playing Cloud City. This game is for two to four players and plays in about 30 minutes. The expansion to The Magnificent, which I've really enjoyed the base game of Magnificent. This, the expansion is called Snow, and it has some, of course, new things it's bringing to the table. It introduces a new performer um, with her own camp tiles and poster cards, and you can play the game up to five players. New master cards provide new types of bonuses and new ways to score. I'm really excited for the expansion Snow for The Magnificent from Aporta Games. Floodgate Games Holy 
Festival of Colors is the game that I played, really enjoyed Holy, and this game is for one to four players. It takes about 20 to 40 minutes to play. I think one of the things that really jumps out at you for Holy is the table presence. It's got this like three tiered board uh, with sort of like a plexiglass so you can sort of see through them. Uh, the gameplay comes through with a the theme as you're throwing colors at different people, throwing colors all on the ground, gaining points. So it has this area majority thing going, some um, card hand management going on as well. So check out Holy from Floodgate Games. Polynesia from Ludo Nova is the game that I haven't played that I'm really interested in learning more about. And this is for two to four players, takes about 60 to 75 minutes to play. Theme looks really cool, this nautical travel uh, theme, the mechanisms, there's a network route building thing going on. In the game, players must save their tribes from the dangers of the volcano by taking them to the islands that will give them the most points. At the same time, players must try to reach the objectives set by the tide cards. So the box cover, I think, is what really drew me in for Polynesia from Ludanova. For number three, the game that I've played that I've really enjoyed playing is Viscounts of the West Kingdom from Renegade Game Studios and Garfield Games. This game is the third in the a trilogy of West Kingdom games. This one plays one to six players and takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. I'd probably say closer to that hour and a half, maybe even two hours to play. Uh, love worker placement type games. You've got this sort of going on as you're, this is more rondelle as you're moving your uh, Viscount around the board to take the different actions. Uh, you've got building going on. There's this cool city tower in the middle that you've got sort of majority scoring. Lots of different things going on. And I think it just works really well seamlessly. Love the artwork. So check out Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Beyond the Sun from Rio Grande Games is the game that I'm really interested in, but I haven't played it yet. It's for two to four players. It takes about one to two hours to play. Uh, the game is a space civilization game in which players collectively decide the technological progress of humankind at the dawn of the space faring era while competing against each other to be the leading faction in the economic development, science, and galactic influence. So theme sounds cool, gameplay sounds interesting. It's got this tech tree going on, so really interested in Beyond the Sun from Rio Grande Games. For number two, the game that I've played that I've really enjoyed is Merchants of Dune Hung. This is from Mandu Games, small box, but I've played this game a lot and I've really, really enjoyed my play. It has set collection going on, some hand management. Uh, there's just really cool things going on with how this camel is moving around, almost like a rondelle, sort of, you're moving around and where you land on the camel, where the camel lands, you're taking an action, taking a treasure card, you're trying to collect different types of treasures, majorities of those, and also different types of treasures in your hand, and sort of that's the win condition. I've really enjoyed my plays of that. Every tile has double-sided, so there's a lot of replayability going on in the game. For Emergence of Jun Hong, plays two to four players in about 30 minutes. Taiwan Tensuyu, The Ink and Empire from Board and Dice. I haven't played this game yet, but it just arrived. It's still in a shrink, so I'm really excited to play it. This game is for one to four players. It takes about one to two hours to play. Players are placing workers onto various locations on the game board, performing actions, collecting resources, constructing buildings and stairs, sculpting statues, expanding their military strength, and collecting weavings. I got to sort of play a little bit of it, but uh, not a full game yet, so I'm really excited to play a full game of Taiwan Tensuyu. This, uh, this game, I think I said this already, one to four players takes about one to two hours to play. One of the cool things is Board and Dice was kind enough to uh, get us some Tantrum House promos, and you can check those out. I'll put a link in the description. There's a couple tiles that you can uh, purchase, and there will be a link in the description to our website that you can um, get some extra promo stuff for Taiwan to see you from Board and Dice. Thank you, and uh, really looking forward to playing this one. Whistle Mountain is in the number one spot. This is from Bezier Games. Really enjoyed my plays of Whistle Mountain. I uh, did a sort of preview video, review video, and also we've done a playthrough video that you can check out on our YouTube channel. This is for two to four players. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. It's got worker placement, tile placement, lots of really cool things going on in Whistle Mountain as you're placing your airships out on the different spots and uh, getting resources, 
and uh, the water level is rising, and so there's this sort of tension going on in the game. Uh, Scott Caputo and Luke Laurie did a great job designing the game, so check out Whistle Mountain from Bezier Games. Lost Ruins of Arnak from CGE is the number one game on this list, but I haven't played it yet. This game is for one to four players, takes about an hour and a half to play. Explore an island to find resources and discover the Lost Ruins of Arnak. In the game, uh, you're combining this deck building aspect going on with worker placement. Um, there's exploration, resource management, discovery. So lots of really cool mechanics going on. Uh, the Art, the art on the box cover looks really cool, so I'm really excited about playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of the, my most anticipated board games coming out this fall at the Eschen Spiel time, and I would love to know what your most anticipated board games are coming out this fall. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. And as always, please like this video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe to Tantrum House.